It is snowing outside and spring is five days from today. So what better time than to talk about things I want to bring into my wardrobe for spring 2022. So that's what we're going to talk about today, friends. We're going to be looking at things I want to thrift, make and buy for spring 2022. And if that is the kind of video that you want to see, then you are definitely going to want to subscribe because there's a lot more where this is coming from. Now, let us get into everything that I'm going to thrift, buy and make for spring, starting with things I want to make this year and what better way than to start with this amazing yarn bless oh it's so pretty I love this color it's like a pinky purple and truthfully it is not a color that I would have normally picked it is also not the color I thought it was I thought it was a little bit more pink pink and less purple pink but that's okay because it's still very pretty and with this yarn I'm going to be making the Louise pullover from Northside Knit Co. I have made the sweater before. I've made it in an attempt to look like a Misha and Puff sweater and it didn't work for a few reasons. Number one, orange, not my color. I really wanted to be one of those cool like slow fashion terracotta rust vibe girls who always wear like all the burnt orange and just look super cool. However, it's just not really a color I like for myself personally. So pink, is this the color? I don't know, but I am planning on making it two sizes bigger because that was the other thing that was wrong with my original one was that it was a little bit too small. And I am holding three swatches that I made. I'm going to, I can't remember which one is which. Okay. So this is the first one that I made. It's a little bit loosey goosey as you can see. This is the size six, six needles and it's a DK weight yarn. The next up is or maybe that was actually, no, this was the size four. Sorry, this was a size five, still a little looser than what I want. This was the size six, very, very loose. Um, and then this was the size four, and this is the one that I'm going to go with. I just think it's a tighter weave, and I, I really like that. That's kind of what I want it to be. And it also, I think, makes the bobbles pop out just a little bit more, so. We're gonna go with the number four. I think this is gonna be really pretty. I have also never swatched so much in my life before. We've got three whole swatches here. So Louise sweater, size medium, in this super pink, super pretty color. I'm very excited about that. And you will see that this kind of is setting the tone for the things I wanna bring into my wardrobe. So let's go on to the next one. Next thing I have in mind is the Clyde jumpsuit from Elizabeth Suzanne. So Elizabeth Suzanne used to sell her clothing and she has since stopped selling her clothing but she now sells her pattern so you can buy the Elizabeth Suzanne jumpsuit pattern and for this jumpsuit I really am excited to use this linen that I have I would show it to you but it is in Montreal and I'm in Toronto just for the week it's gonna be this lovely like heavyweight linen and a like slate gray so it's kind of like a black gray I love the like big swooping pockets on the Clyde I really think that it's gonna come along really pretty. I may even play with some like contrast top stitching. I haven't yet decided, but I'm very, 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 very excited to make that jumpsuit because I'm just like ready for easy breezy jumpsuit weather. Nothing helps you get like more comfy and ready for the day than just putting on a jumpsuit and then immediately feeling put together. <laughs> so the clad jumpsuit in slate, I think is gonna be a real winner. And as soon as I get home from my as soon as I get home from Toronto, that is what I'm going to be making. Another piece I've been thinking about a lot and I'm really excited for is like a romantic white shirt. I feel like a romantic white blouse is like ultimate spring. I just think that with some denim, your light coat over top, it's just so pretty. And so I have this linen. This is from thefabricstore.com and it is super pretty white, antique white, antique white softened. There we go. That's what it is. <laughs> so I was thinking initially of doing the Coeli blouse, which I think is a really pretty sort of smock style floaty blouse, but it's not quite sheer enough, this fabric. Like I think that it should maybe be like a really light cotton shirting because it has so many layers and because it's just so much fabric. I'm gonna give this a wash, see how it washes up and then make a call from there. Either it will be the Coeli blouse or it will be a orchard's top. Vivian is releasing a orchard's dress sleeve expansion pack, which is gonna be very exciting. And I tested that for her as well as the dress. So I think for me, what I'm gonna do is make a blouse version, which she has as like part of the expansion. You can make it a top rather than a dress. 
And my friend Jack from Instagram made a orchard's top with the sleeves, but she like pattern hacked it to make it more swingy. So she slashed and spread it. I'm gonna put some photos up here so you can see her pattern pieces and see a little bit about what, you know, what hers look like but it looks so beautiful and i think that this would just be perfect as like a swingy blouse and as the linen wears in it'll just like soften up really nicely i think that will be very 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 pretty so that's kind of what i'm thinking i want to try jack's hack <laughs> by slashing and spreading the blouse also lengthening it because i believe the blouse comes quite empire and you're gonna want to lengthen that significantly. I'm not sure how much you lengthen it by. I may ask her and put that in the notes, but I think that this will be really pretty either as a coily blouse or as an orchard's sleeve expansion top swingy hack thing. Okay, I almost didn't even want to mention this because I've talked about making jeans on this channel so many times, but the heroine jeans are something that are really on my list. And so I think I'm going to depressurize it by making a wearable toile with some cheaper denim that I have on hand. And that way, if I mess them up, then it's fine. We'll just, you know, I can make the adjustments that I need for the next better pair. And so I think that's what is finally going to happen because I love wearing jeans. There's a lot more jeans weather in my future from where I live. So I could make a pair in the next month or so and still be able to wear them for quite a while and also like be able to figure out how to hack the pattern for fall to make like that really solid pair of jeans that I've been wanting. So it's going to be the heroin pant, the heroin jean from Merchant and Mills. I will take you along in that process because I think it's going to be a whole fitting process and I will be in my new apartment when I start those. Thank goodness. So it's going to be a whole adventure and I hope you come on it. But yes, that is in my spring plans. Officially, you heard it here. You heard it here, everyone. <laughs> and then lastly, this is like a maybe. This is like a hard maybe. But I have on my Make 9 a suit, a linen suit. And I saw the fabric that I wanted from the fabric store, the one from New Zealand, not the one from the States. Very confusing which one is which. But I think a pink or like lilac linen would be so pretty. And then I could do, they have got this matching gingham bias tape. So I could do the gingham bias tape on all of the edges. Oh, how pretty would that be? Yeah, so that's kind of what I have in mind is to do something like that or do something similar to the acne set that I've seen. It looks really, really pretty. I love the kind of boxy shape of it. You could do it with like the Paola workwear jacket and maybe like the modern sewer um, utility jeans. I think that would be a really great combination and do it in like a purple linen or like a pink linen or like a cornflower blue. So yeah, the ideas are rolling. We're on like a color sprint right now. Like it has been neutrals for so long that we're just like, we're going hard on color. Okay, so that was everything that I want to make. Maybe it's a little bit ambitious, but I finally have like my sojo back and I'm feeling like I can you know, tackle these projects for spring. But now on my buy list, I've tried to keep it quite narrow because I really don't want to actually buy all that much, but there are a few things that I would like to bring into my wardrobe. The first thing that I want to bring into my wardrobe are a pair of sneakers, and I have truthfully always been like a white sneaker gal, but I have been eyeing these sneakers from New Balance that have got all the colors that I am trying to actively bring into my wardrobe. The pink, the green, the blue, like the cream, it's all there and it's perfect. There's been a couple other, there's been like an A6 pair that have those colors as well. So that's kind of what I'm after is like that combination of colors to then go with like the colors of my wardrobe. So I am officially gonna be a non white sneakers gal. And I think it's just fun to like introduce some color. I'm really like ready to bring in like a few newer things that have like a special pop. But then on the opposite side of pop, some plain t-shirts. And while I could definitely make t-shirts, I've tried it and honestly I didn't enjoy it. I've you know loved making turtlenecks, but making t-shirts is just not is not a good time for me. And so I'd rather buy t-shirts from a trusty brand that I love. Cotton, I've bought a ton of t-shirts from them before. They are made in Canada, they are sustainable, they are a B Corp. It's just like boom, 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 perfect combination of things. I really like their essential crew neck as well as their relaxed crew neck. So maybe like a white one of each of those. I'm not sure yet. Another thing that I've been thinking about, but I haven't really been sure is potentially buying a pair of leggings. Again, in a brighter color because I've got black. 
all my leggings are really starting to wear out and so it is something that I need. I know that I could easily make leggings but again it's just something that I don't think I want to spend my time on and so I would rather just buy something sustainably that I know are going to last and that I'm going to love. So leggings may or may not be in my future but I'm thinking that I'm leaning yes. <laughs> so if you have any like favorite leggings brands I've heard really good things about Girlfriend Collective um, let me know and then maybe I can even do a review on the channel if that's something that you are into. And lastly, I really want to add more fun accessories and fun jewelry because even when like you're wearing something plain, it's super fun to just add like a pop of color, namely fruit earrings. I've been on a fruit earring kick. I've been really wanting these produce bag earrings that this Toronto maker sells. I think that they're so cool and they're like super fun and would be really awesome for the spring and the summer. I've also seen like really cool little like cherry earrings, uh, lots of like cool polymer clay earrings, checkerboard stuff, all that. And I think that buying earrings from small designers and makers is a really great way to support local without spending a ton of money. And then lastly, my thrift list. And it is quite small because like I said, I'm trying not to add all that much to my wardrobe, just the essentials and things to kind of freshen up a bit. So the first thing on my list is a trench coat and I wanted to make a trench coat. I actually, I think I put a coat on my make nine list. And the more that I thought about it, you know, I see trench coats at the thrift store all the time and I've thrifted trench coats before. I don't have any of them anymore. But I know that it's something that I can find at the thrift store and so I would rather than make something new or even like buy something new, buy something thrifted so that, you know, we can remove some clothing from landfills or divert clothing from landfills and give something new life because there are lots of really, really great trench coats out there, whether it's vintage or thrifted. I think that I could probably find something really awesome in like a light blue or a light pink or in like a, my kind of classic navy that I always go for. And then the last step on my thrift list is some graphic t-shirts. This is kind of like a forever item on my list. I really want to bring in some like really fun graphic t-shirts from like, you know, I love the sort of varsity style graphic t-shirts or I really like the like fun sort of slogans. Those are super fun. Uh, ringer t-shirts are always a fave and just the like ultra thin band t-shirts like the super super thin paper thin almost not there super soft super worn t-shirts you just can't buy them new like that and it's more fun when they're when they're vintage and thrifted and a little bit older so while I probably won't be thrifted because it can be very challenging to find thrifted t-shirts that are like in that style there's a lot of vintage stores that have a really awesome t-shirts that I will be hitting up because support local you know that's the whole that's the whole point if you've made it to the end of this video thank you so much for being here i would really love your feedback can you let me know if you like this style of video i switched it up a bit from doing just the things that i want to make this spring and instead made it things i want to thrift make and buy are you cool with that are you into it if you are let me know if you're not also let me know because then i'll just stick to doing the things i want to make this is all for you guys. So you let me know what you want to see and I will be happy to deliver. Again, thank you so much for being here. I will be seeing you next week. Bye.